Hello. Today I wanted to do a small video on a couple of concepts that uh, took me a while to get accustomed to um, in Emacs. But as soon as I picked up on, um, you know, using them more often, it helped me a lot to improve my overall experience with, you know, with this tool. So the first one that I wanted to talk about is the help section. Now, I'm not going to lie, I'm not really accustomed to reading manuals at all. I know that is healthier if I just read the manual because my, you know, overall idea of how everything works, it's going to be better. But more often than not, I feel that I don't have enough time. But I do encourage people to read the manuals if they can, um, because I know that it's better for you. So with Emacs, you pretty much have your manual um, already loaded with your Emacs uh, instance. So let's say that you wanted to learn more about, you know, your key bindings. So to fire up the, the help section, you can do it. I mean, in vanilla Emacs, it will be control H and then you can type um, question mark. So that it's going to tell you exactly the help sections available to you. Um, there are quite a bit. So let's say that you wanted to learn more about a certain key um, in, in your Emacs configuration, at least the current one. So I'm going to call K and then it's expecting me to give me to give it the, the key that I'm looking for. So let's say that I want it um, control N. So you can read all of this if you want. It pretty much boils down to, you know, CN runs the command next line. This is the signature for next line. Uh, you can see that it takes an optional argument, uh, which determines how many uh, how many lines is going to move um, the following position. You can also pass it negative arguments, so it sort of works like previous line. Um, you know, but that that is off topic. The main thing that I want you to understand is that you can call or you can see the documentations for whatever function or uh, you know key map that you're working with. And let's see, let's say that you wanted to instead of you know looking at keys, you wanted to go to a specific function. So let's say that you wanted to go to find file. Okay, again, this is I mean you can read all of this if if you want, but the main thing again is that you can look at the signature. Uh, for me. I'm not sure if it's because um, I'm a programmer. I'm more accustomed to looking at, you know, functions, definitions, and then I can most of the time tell what what they're expecting me to give it. Uh, so find file, it takes a required argument file name, and then an optional argument called wildcards. The other main thing that really helped me a lot when I was starting using Emacs is the fact that Emacs in itself, it's more of an environment. I know that people call it as, uh, you know, an operating system. And I mean, to me, that's just a meme or a joke, whatever. Definitely is more than just a text editor. It's like a, like a text editing template that you can use to do whatever you want. You can do a lot of crazy things. The guys that are working with, uh, with the EXWM package, they, they created bindings for X11 and they managed to connect it through Emacs. I mean, that to me is really impressive. That takes a lot of dedication and it's a testament of, you know, it may not be as well as, you know, common Lisp or, or something like that, but it definitely does the job relatively well. When I first started using Emacs, I noticed this a scratch buffer and I was like, what the hell is this? I didn't know what to do with it. I pretty much killed it as soon as I was, you know, in contact with it. But as soon as I started learning a little bit of Elisp, you know, and configuring things and noticing that, oh, you know, this is a more of a programming language than just a configuration syntax file. The main thing that uh, makes Emacs really unique is that you can type any of the functions that you have available and you can call it whatever you want. So inside of the scratch buffer, you can type the name of, of whatever function that you want. And just, you know, a quick note, I'm not going to go into a full ELS tutorial. I mean, to begin with, I'm not really that great with it. 
but the thing is that every, everything that you call within um, ELSP has to be surrounded by parentheses. So let's call, for instance, find file. If I call evil region, so this is going to use the, you know, the, the interpreter, it's going to raise an error because the number of arguments do not match. So I'm going to give it my home directory. So let's call evil region again. And then it's going to open the directory in dire or dear ed, however it's supposed to be pronounced, not sure. And that's pretty much true for everything inside of Emacs. That's how everything, you know, it's glued together. So if you, I mean, let's say that um, you, you wanted to create a new function just for this session. So you can go ahead and type the whole thing, you know, like hello world, you know, the typical. And then interact pretty much means that you can call this with, um, with MX or console MX, whatever. And then you're going to print hello world to the, um, to the mini buffer. Now notice that if I try to look for hello world, it doesn't exist. So I need to evolve this region. Okay. And then if I look for hello world, then it's going to print hello world to the mini buffer. And again, I used to hate this scratch buffer, but nowadays I think it's really handy, at least for, for me. Because whenever I'm doing something specific, like I want to, let's say that I wanted to test some behavior inside of Illisp. It's better for me to just use the, you know, the scratch buffer. And, but again, it's not just for the scratch buffer. Let's say that you're, you were editing, you know, a, a source code file for C++. Um, I mean, the, the syntax is going to be all messed up, but if you, I mean, if you highlight it, and you say evil region, it still works. Again, these are all available in all in, in your Emacs session. Whatever you are that you can, you know, type in or you know the, the name of that command is there, you can just do an evil and it's gonna execute the command. I was not accustomed to working this way, but as soon as I started, you know, getting into them, I realized that they were quite useful. And they were useful to me, so I just wanted to share with you guys in case um, it, it helped you or just, you know, maybe a different perspective. And as always, if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section. And thank you so much for watching.